Hi, let's take a look at the pretty excellent 48 half pan watercolor set. This includes the same colors that were in the 36, but has been expanded upon to include 12 pearlescent mica colors that match the ones available in Paul Rubens. I'll swatch these out, do some paintings with them, and talk about light fast problems, mainly regarding orange, reds, and purples that are fugitive due to being enhanced with fluorescent dyes. There are definitely misleading light fast ratings on the color chart. Nearly every color has been lazily rated at the same four of five stars regardless of pigment, which is really inaccurate when comparing staple colors like earth browns and black with the performance of fluorescent pinks and purples. Even though I'll be pointing out some negatives, please keep in mind that this set is very reasonably priced and it offers a good value despite some flaws, especially for artists who don't require their work to be light fast. Because I do not approve of this misrepresentation though, I will be talking a lot about light fastness and the pigments used in this video. I also want to point out that these student paints are made differently than Paul Rubin's Pro Grade, despite both of them painting out beautifully if used side by side. These colors provide smooth washes, they're not chalky, they have a high pigment load, but some colors are supplemented with cheaper dyes. For instance, the Deep Violet PV23 in this set is full of fugitive fluorescent dye, whereas the Paul Rubens Pro version is pure light fast PV23. I also saw the same thing demonstrated in several mica colors, the most dramatic of which being flash yellow. Paints in this set would look very comparable to the Paul Rubens version in normal light. But once I'm done swatching, I'll use a black light to expose all the fluorescent dye additives that are hidden in the pretty excellent versions. Some binder changes and dye additives result in these being a step down in quality and price from Paul Rubin's Pro Paints, and they also cut costs by using less packaging. There's no individual wrappers or plastic pans. The paints are just glued into an ice cube style flexible tray. The colors are not sold individually to replace, but a good portion of these are standard pigments that you can replace as needed with other brands. The color selection skips more expensive pigments that you'd find in pro paints, lacking colors like nickel azo yellow, a pure magenta PR 122, cobalts, or cadmiums. The cadmium red and orange colors should include the word hue in the name, since these are lookalikes and not made with genuine cadmium pigment. Otherwise, the color selection does offer a nice variety and the set comes in a durable tin with a water brush. The reflective mica colors are slightly harder to re-wet, but this is helped by letting them soak for a minute with a drop of water. All of the colors disperse and blend in a smooth, predictable way. This set is ideal for projects where fading is not a concern, such as greeting cards, painting in sketchbooks, or practicing painting techniques without fear of wasting more expensive materials. There are enough light fast colors in this set that I still think it's a great deal for any artist, since about two thirds of this set is suitable for long-term wall display or art for sale. Professional artists who sell prints or stickers where the art created is scanned for print reproduction rather than for hanging original paintings on the wall may also appreciate this bargain set as a whole. For the last couple of years, the pretty excellent 36 color set has been one of the top recommended beginner paint sets available. It's reasonably priced for the quality. There's very few alternatives that perform this well for this cheap, breaking down to roughly 50 or 60 cents per half pan, depending on the sale. This set provides a large assortment of colors, great for allowing beginners to learn which colors they'll reach for most often. This set is almost entirely made of smooth, non-granulating paints of a mostly transparent nature, aside from the pearlescent ones. There are many bright colors, but they can easily be toned down into a more muted selection by mixing them with their color wheel complements to create neutral or shadow colors. Like most pan set assortments, the lack of granulating pigments means most of these are staining and good for layering. Aside from mixtures with PB29 Ultramarine Blue, there will be very little in the way of texture or color separating two-tone effects. 
my set had a duplicate bronze instead of a royal gold which is a bummer since gold is such a useful accent color that goes with just about anything i noticed that several other reviewers did get the right color so this was probably a mistake that doesn't happen often but i mention it just in case if you order this on Amazon, it's easy to return, but it would be disappointing if you got this on AliExpress and it wasn't as easy to get a replacement. For those of you in the USA, I'll put a link to this set on Amazon in the description under the video. The 36 standard colors are the same as the older set, but there have been a few name changes while keeping the same number ID, and one of the reds and a purple have had an increase in fluorescent dye, making them appear slightly brighter or more reddish than before. If you already own the previous set, the only new additions are the 12 mica colors. If you have the Paul Rubens mica colors, then there's nothing new to see here aside from some hidden dyes. There are at least seven colors that contain an undisclosed fluorescent dye, which you can clearly see under black light. Not every color that will fade glows, but every color in this set that glows will fade. So inspecting them under black light can help you immediately identify some fugitive colors without having to wait a couple months for the results of a window light fast test. From my window test, I see that there are additional colors that fade in this set which don't contain bright fluorescent dyes, including cadmium orange hue made with yellow PY83, which is prone to fading when diluted, as well as three greens that claim to use PO49, the extinct Quinn Gold. While China does continue to produce some old discontinued pigments, such as the PR88 and Violet Red, I do not actually believe that the greens can contained PO49 since that was a very light fast pigment and these greens showed fading that indicates a fugitive yellow was mixed in with normally stable phthalo green though I can't rule out that they've made a chemically inferior version of PO49. You may hear some artists downplay the importance of light fastness, but no matter how important it is for your particular project, I think we can all agree that the information should be available in an honest and clearly understandable way. Properly labeled ratings help you choose which materials are appropriate for certain tasks. I've had some harsh lessons in choosing the right materials for the job, which I really hope to spare beginner artists from learning the hard way. It was pretty embarrassing when I saw a portrait I gifted to a family member start to fade by the next year's holiday visit. At the time, I had been living in a northern state, and I didn't realize that the intense UV that shines into a Florida home's living room could make fugitive paints fade that quickly. For reasons like this, I'm pretty darn disappointed with the incorrect light fast ratings and the fact that only pigments, not dyes, are listed as the color ingredients. This is bound to cause confusion. It's just like how opera pink watercolors are sometimes labeled as just PR122 without noting that the fluorescent pink dye is an additive, causing some beginners to assume that magenta PR122 is fugitive when it was actually just the dye part that faded. Even if this set had skipped fluorescent dyes, it's unlikely at this price they would have given you light fast reds anyway. 
Most bargain sets have the majority of their fading in the warm colors. There's very few light fast red pigments in existence. They have to be so much stronger on a molecular level to resist being broken down by sunlight, since red absorbs more UV than the cooler end of the color spectrum. Durable red pigments are pretty expensive, so you don't usually find any reliable primaries like PR122 Magenta or PR108 Cadmium Red in bargain priced sets. But you could always supplement a set like this with a tube or a pan of pro grade red paint if you require light fastness for your project. Paul Rubens does offer a very durable cadmium and magenta in their pro line. This set does have a nice rose red made of the light fast PV19 though, which I'm really glad it does, otherwise this set would have lacked a light fast primary mixing trio. Because I plan to offer these paintings for sale, I decided to carefully avoid using the fugitive reds and purples. I was still able to create a rainbow of colors, but I think that if I were planning to do nothing but wall art projects with this set, I would blow through the pan of PV19 rose red pretty quickly. I ended up using it to mix light fast orange, red, and purple by combining PV19 with PY3 yellow or the several suitable blues made of PB15 or PB29. There are other quality stable colors in this set, including six shades of light fast browns, which could be used for skin tones or landscapes. For beginner watercolor painters, this is a great budget-friendly set to start with if you're just practicing washes, gradient blending, layering, or even experimenting with fun texture effects, such as using table salt like I did on the unicorn. Since most of the colors are transparent, they will be suitable for most watercolor techniques and result in clean, vibrant color mixtures. I can only think of one other set in this price range that really competes with it, and that's the Mia Hemi set with the neat diamond or rhombus shaped pans. But they don't offer metallic colors and also have some fading in their reds, which I'll review in a future video. Some artists have told me that they prefer to use cheap art supplies for practice instead of using up more costly paints. I can understand feeling hesitant to experiment with expensive supplies. Only owning professional supplies might hinder artistic progress out of fear of wasting paint. I can see the value of bargain sets like this despite their quirks, even if it's just for my sketchbook. For the most part though, I will not commit to time intensive paintings unless I'm using more reliable art supplies. I may use these when doing color combination studies. The variety of colors would be good for making mock-up color schemes for paintings that I would complete with different light fast pigments. Let me know in the comment section how you feel about this set and what you would use it for. If you'd like to see more, you can find all of my detailed swatch card images results from my independent light fast testing, and other art supply reviews on my website. I'm currently building a huge pigment database where thousands of colors can be compared side by side with paint from other brands. Updates about this project, along with line art drawings and high res color scans are also available on Patreon. Thanks for watching.